Okay, so welcome back and uh, we'll continue our uh, problem uh, uh, solving in this particular video as well. If you remember uh, from the previous module, we looked at uh, the transfer station economics problem and I hope that you are working on that problem. I really want you to work on it. And then uh, we also did that load count analysis uh, part. So we'll do some more uh, math in this particular to just to illustrate how the different things that we have learned is uh, can be applied in a practical scenario which is very very important because ultimately you you should be able to use the land, use the knowledge uh, when you are trying to solve problems for any particular ULB uh, especially uh, for uh, when we are talking about all these uh, smart cities and all the initiative uh, without having a smart waste management system like a uh, smart when, when I say smart means real working waste management system. Uh, unfortunately, as you know, we have been trying uh, uh, the waste management system is still kind of struggling in the country. We have to improve that. So that's the reason this course is being offered. So we are trying to, uh, to we'll look at some of the other maths. So let's uh, get started uh, in terms of uh, uh, like how to do this. Uh, we, we, if you remember the last problem that we did was on how to come up with the waste generation rate. So one, up, one way of doing that was the load count analysis which we covered in the last uh, problem of the last video. Now the next option you can also have is you can do a mass balance. It's a, you can do a material mass balance. Now when we say material mass balance what that does mean? It's uh, you are trying to take a boundary that boundary could be a city that boundary could be a state or any particular boundary you are taking and then you are doing a what is the rate of accumulation of material within the boundary which is uh, which is being stored in the boundary is how will you find out so if this is say if this is the boundary we have so how much is the rate of accumulation in this particular boundary how much things are being accumulated how will find that out we have an input to the boundary we have an output to the boundary so this we have input we have output and then we could have some generation rate like uh, there is some plus r or minus r within that as well some waste material could be produced within the system so input minus output plus r will give us uh, what is the waste that is being accumulated or material that is being accumulated within this particular area so that's what have been explained over here so you have the rate of material flow into the system boundary rate of the method for flow out of the system boundary and rate of general waste material within the system boundary so using that you can find out what is the storage in a particular uh, area so now when we say flow out uh, flow out could be product like the wastewater recyclable leachate uh, vapors and the rate of generation could be some biological incineration on all those transformation that is happening within the system. Now the system boundary could, could be a landfill site, could be a manufacturing facility. So where it is used, say if you are, if you are a company, for example Tata Steel or any particular company, uh, they want to know how much waste they are producing per unit or per turn of the product or per unit uh, say if you say a telco or uh, a maruti they will say per car that I am per maruti uh, uh, alto or per maruti gen or whatever the vehicle they choose Silerio at uh, what is the amount of waste that I am producing. So but why this value is important for them? This value is important for them they can so that they can work on reducing this ratio. So they can uh, reduce this ratio further. And, uh, and that they, what they will do is they will uh, try to come up uh, with uh, uh, like a st what, what they do is this, uh, they will try to reduce this ratio and then what it helps up if lower the waste, lower the amount uh, spent to manage that waste and lower the amount is spent to manage that waste that means better is their profitability or they have more competitiveness two, two brand same product one company produces less waste less money spent to, uh, to manage that waste that means they have less capital cost going for that particular waste uh, uh, particular product so that helps them to be competitive so uh, all companies like I said here smart companies work on reducing the waste rate reducing the ratio which ratio the ratio of waste per turn of product or waste per unit of product whatever they try to reduce that and that's uh, uh, one of the goal they want to do on uh, so in that particular aspect uh, the, it's if you look at some of this uh, example mass balance problem here 
uh, if we can try to do some of these, say this is one uh, uh, agricultural processing waste. There is a cannery. It uh, processes fresh produce and it cans it and packages it and then sends it to the market. And they have uh, following material uh, received daily. They have some raw produce as you probably uh, produce means uh, the vegetables and all those kind of stuff. So, they, have, they get raw produce. So, this is uh, uh, I think what is it say it is a cannery. So, they make a cannery means it may it will make cans. Nowadays, if you go to Big Pajar or Reliance Fresh and other places you start getting things in cans. Uh, so, it is uh, like it, we even have a tomato soup uh, or to, sorry tomato uh, uh, juice or uh, even to pulp. Uh, uh, those things are coming up in cans. Different things are showing up in the cans. So this is uh, so they are basically getting this uh, raw raw produce and they are making the canned uh, product and they are selling it back. So raw produce they get around 12 tons per day. That's the raw produce they are getting. Then they have uh, they are putting it into the cans. So they get around cans of 5 tons per day. Then the cans has to be packaged. So it, you need certain cartoons to package it. So that's your 0.5 tons per day for that. Then you have some miscellaneous material that could be some packaging material, some tape, some uh, stickers, some labels. So that's around 0.3 tons per day. So they are these are the stuff that is coming to the uh, particular facility. Then they are doing certain uh, processes there, and that process is 10 tons of final product. They are producing final product, which is around 10 tons. 1.2 tons of produced uh, is gets wasted because this uh, produce uh, has got some uh, problem. Uh, this produce uh, may be many times uh, uh, when you go and buy vegetables, you find that when you come home and then you try to put it in the fridge and then you find that oh, maybe this one particular tomatoes is not that good. Uh, it's so, you do not uh, basically you may have to throw it away depends on how. So, since uh, this uh, companies they have to have their quality control, quality assurance they have to maintain certain food uh, standards. So, many times there are certain uh, produce which does get wasted and uh, so they have this wasted, but they are not uh, throwing it away. They are basically feeding it to cattle. So, they are feeding it to uh, cattle uh, there. Uh, so, then uh, so this is not going out of the system actually. Then you have 0.8 tons of produce which ends up in the wastewater in the uh, any if you remember in the uh, very beginning we also talked about that food waste. Uh, is uh, the water waste. Uh, so, if you waste the food because there are a lot of embedded water, there are a lot of uh, embedded uh, uh, water in the food. So, if you are wasting the food, you are also wasting the water. So, so there is uh, when that water uh, when you uh, goes that 0.8 tons of the produce, they, it ends up in the wastewater because of the moisture there. Then 4 tons of cans is stored internally for future use. So, they are just uh, on a, that particular day, they got 5 tons per day, but they only need 1 ton. These 4 tons are actually uh, just uh, stored internally for future use. 1 tons of the cans is used for packaging because of course, uh, 4 plus 1 is 5 and that is what we have. 3 percent of can used are damaged and recycled. So, when they found out that 3 percent of the cans are actually cannot be used because it is already damaged, but they are being recycled, they are not being thrown away. So, these are the data provided to us. It may seem too much information, uh, but uh, for any problem like this or any in fact, in general for any problem, my suggestion or my uh, uh, advice to you is to always you try to put these things in a pictorial description. Pictorial means made some made a sketch, made a small sketch. You do not have to be an expert uh, uh, artist to do that. Just simple boxes and then say these are the input, these are the output because essentially these are the mass balance problem. And any mass balance that you do, it is a, it's a good idea to do that. So, we will try to do that as well in this particular uh, 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 stuff. So, here and then we have some other stuff there too. like. Uh, we have some more data. Uh, all cartoons are used for packaging. So, basically all cartoons are used for packaging of the product. 3 percent of the cartoons are damaged during the processing has to be recycled. 25 percent of the miscellaneous material is stored for future use. So, those uh, uh, I said those, those are stationary material, stickers and all those kind of stuff 25 percent is stored for future use. 25 percent of this miscellaneous material end up as mixed waste. So, it is uh, because of when you use use those uh, tape uh, stickers, many times the stickers will have uh, other paper attached to it. So, you took the stickers off, you put that on the box, but that the other paper becomes a waste. So, those things uh, things do end up uh, as a mixed waste. 
remaining 15 percent of the miscellaneous material becomes waste paper. So, you have some uh, uh, they become waste paper as well. 35 percent of this waste paper is recycled, the rest is sent out as a mixed waste. So, determine a material mass balance on the production of the scannery plant. So, we have four input to the system produce cans, cartons and the miscellaneous material. So, what we will do is we will try to set up uh, our uh, like a pro problem in terms of uh, the input output and whatever is things are happening. So, we have this four input to the system which so, whatever is coming into the system they either become a final product they either uh, go into as a final product or they send it to feed cows or they become part of the wastewater either or they could be recycled, they could be stored for future use or they can become mixed waste. So, these are where they are ending up. So, let us start with the mass balance of the entire system. So, if you look at the total mass balance, so the total process input is whatever is the raw produce, cans, cartons and miscellaneous which was data has provided to us. So, we can add them up. So, it is around 7 it is a 17.8 tons per day. So, that is the amount of material coming into uh, the system. So, we have it to account for. So, in terms of the mass balance we have to account for 17.8 tons of material on a daily basis. So, that much amount of material that we are getting. So, now in terms of the accounting uh, how we will try to find out uh, this uh, where they are end up. So, there are some material which is stored internally. So, cans as 4 ton and then miscellaneous 25 percent. So, 25 percent of the 0 0.3 ton is 0 0.075 ton. So, if you add them up, so this is the amount of uh, material which is stored internally and again uh, these are all information uh, uh, sorry yeah uh, this all information is uh, what we have is uh, from the previous uh, uh, slide. So, it is uh, uh, again uh, I will uh, there are there are several slides uh, since this is a this seems to be a much bigger problem, but it is not that difficult. It is a simple mass balance problem. What we have to do is to go step by step. I have shown you each and every step in detail in this particular example just to walk you through. My advice to you and my strong uh, suggestions to you is to you if you want to you have the solution you take that problem and then you work out by your own then you match your solution with the solution that I am providing and to see whether you got everything ok or not because again this is not very difficult it is just that it little bit of time consuming you have to go by step as by step make sure you have the same units and then it is all fine. So, in terms of the material is stored internally uh, 4 tons we have been given that information and then 25 percent of uh, the miscellaneous materials if you add them up. So, this much is actually just this goes into the storage. Final product we have been given 10 tons per day that is uh, uh, that is produced plus uh, uh, the cans also goes out uh, because the cans are uh, uh, used to store this final product and they we have been told that. Uh, nearly uh, only point what three only three percent of the cans were damaged or something the rest cans are used in terms of one ton uh, which is uh, used uh, per day. So, which is around 0.97 tons per day that is uh, being used in the can then this cans goes into the carton. So, this whatever the tomato juice or uh, whatever is this particular product uh, that uh, from the produce things goes into those cans. Now, the scans goes into the cardboard boxes. So, the scans are also going out of the system, uh, cardboard boxes also going out of the system. So, in terms of the can we, we figure it out it is around 0.97 tons per day. For the cartons again uh, you need uh, nearly it says uh, you need half of that. So, 0.97 uh, uh, with the 50 percent is you get 0.4 tons per day uh, that is the amount of carton that is used. So, if you add them up so this is the amount going out. Remember we had amount coming in was 17.8 if you remember from the previous slide around 17 point something things which is going out is around 11.5. So, there is a difference of around 6 tons where the 6 tons are ending up we need to find that out. So, waste product discharge at waste water 0.8 tons per day we know that. Uh, so, that is the total coming out to be 0.8 tons per day that is going into discharge into the waste water. Then material is recycled. 
so that uh, if you uh, cans 3% of the can is recycled cottons 3% uh, of the cotton is recycled miscellaneous paper uh, part of it is recycled as well uh, so you find out that particular value and these are again based on the data that we had uh, sorry uh, based on the data that you uh, we have been provided you can come up with this uh, uh, details so total we have uh, material recycle is 0 0.0975 tons per day then we have some mixed waste which is again part of the miscellaneous paper and then uh, some other other material which is there uh, so you have these uh, coming up as 0.1725 tons per day there is something which is fed to the cattle which is around 1.2 tons per day so there are different things that is being happening into the plant and everything has to be accounted for so that's the kind of beauty of this particular problem is uh, not difficult but you need to be really diligent in terms of going step by step and including everything uh, from there so once you have some of these data what you can do is you can come up with this uh, mm, i would say sketch uh, where you have this input to the system so this is our system uh, this is uh, with the cannery uh, process uh, system so the input was 17.8 uh, this much uh, tons per day internal storage uh, we have been uh, told that four ton four tons of cans and then uh, some uh, paper card sorry cardboard so based on that it comes 4.075 and so the remaining one has to be uh, so the and then we have the outputs in terms of 11.455 as product this much as wastewater treatment plant this is recycled this is mixed waste this is fed to cattle so if you add them up you get 13.725 so if you add this plus this it comes to 17.8 so that means we have accounted for everything so that's um, that's how you should look at your uh, mass balance problem where you account for all these different component and then you cross check by having a sketch like that so that uh, helps you to find out and this is again as if you have uh, like it's it's a pretty simple but again that has to be done has to be uh, followed up and uh, you go step by step and then uh, once you have uh, this is the overall and uh, for the entire system then we can do it for individually as well so if you just want to do it for the produce uh, for the produce 12 tons was the input there is no storage some goes as a product some goes to wastewater treatment plant some is fed to cattle so you look at that 12 tons coming in 12 tons going out so that's uh, input and output is equal it should be uh, for this uh, like a mass balance for the cans 5 tons coming in 4 is internal storage 0.97 goes for product and 0 0.03 is recycle so again 5 tons 4 plus 1 so it uh, adds up there then uh, cartons uh, 0.5 tons comes in there is some uh, no external storage uh, there is uh, goes some to the product uh, some gets recycled so that's again uh, they do add up to 0.5 coming in 0.5 as a out, as an output miscellaneous material we had 0.3 comes in there is some internal storage there is some recycle there is some goes to the mixed waste again you can uh, do the math associated with that and they do add up so what i'm trying to what i was trying to illustrate by doing this uh, problem is that uh, again uh, these are the very simple mass balance concept and mass you may have used this mass balance concept in other classes as well so you can uh, very uh, where you can uh, account for uh, different waste that is uh, going out and then based on how much waste is being produced you can come up with your waste collection system for this particular plant you can come up with if you want to have a uh, on-site treatment system so all those things can be done but first of all we need to know how much waste because unless we know the waste quantity and waste quality we cannot design the system and uh, the waste quantity and quality should be collected in a very very thorough manner we, uh, especially say we were talking just recently in a meeting that uh, when whenever many times what happens is uh, uh, these vendors and other companies they come forward and they su submit a proposal uh, sub submit a project saying that we can do this this will be viable but the the amount of the type of data that they collect uh, the, the all the calculation that is based on certain uh, type of data and that data itself is not that reliable so if the data is not reliable that's kind of the building block so if uh, it's the data is like a foundation it's uh, it's like a foundation of a big building so if your data is not good if the foundation is not good the building will collapse so the similarly if the data is not good whatever design calculation you do we are, we are not sure whether it's going to work or we are not going to work so waste collection data 
waste generation data and waste composition data. And we have talked about all these things in our uh, in our class over the last uh, four and a half weeks. These are very, very important. This is like a first thing we need to do for any smart uh, waste management system or any good waste management system. We need to have waste quality, quantity data. And when I say quantity data, it's not only it's not only the data that is uh, although it's it's a good idea to get the data what is uh, the households are producing, but uh, we are also have to understand that there is the waste quantity or waste quality keep on changing. It's uh, uh, even the quantity keeps on changing because the things are being taken away. So if you have some recyclables showing up in those primary collection center, there will be people rack pickers and other things they will take out those recyclables and uh, then later on at the landfill side as well do you see people trying to pick some of those valuable materials out so if you want to set up a waste to energy plant or some other plant you need to find out okay what data i should collect should i collect data from the individual houses or should i collect data at the primary collection center or secondary collection center or at the existing dump site so we need to really think very hard to collect to have this relevant data uh, which is representative as well of the real scenario so that's very critical so and uh, and once you have this data uh, like in terms of uh, these kind of problems you can do certain mass balance and all that so let's look at some more problems uh, so this is this was one example let's look at some more uh, examples here uh, it's a in the, the other example is if so if we start doing some backyard composting so if you backyard composting, it also will uh, impact the collection rate. Why it will impact the collection rate? Just think logically. What will it what will do? Certain waste that was we are putting onto the curbside or we are giving into the waste collectors. We, if we are doing our compost in our backyard, we want those food waste. We will probably not give those food waste away. So we would like to use that food waste. So that's uh, then uh, the amount of waste going to those trucks will go down. So there is the, if the way, amount of waste going to the trucks go down, that means the same truck can probably service more houses. That could mean that we need less number of truck. So it's it's all kind of all related to it's a, so. So in terms of uh, if you are if somebody starts doing this backyard composting, we are encouraging people like uh, there are many cities in India where we are increasing a household to do their compost and use it for their own garden. Uh, for their b balcony garden or whatever uh, in there if it's a subdivision or if it's a, a gated community they can they have a lot of landscaping and other stuff they can use those things over there so in terms of backyard composting or this do with, as, I, as I said it will also impact to reduce the it will impact or potentially reduce the collection uh, rates food waste uh, we what are things that we use uh, use a food waste we try to avoid using the meat because it doesn't degrade very it does not degrade very quickly so that uh, we try to reduce the amount of meat going into this uh, uh, backyard composter they do attract pests uh, and flies as well and take long time to break down then uh, yard waste uh, some cities require residents to compost leaves so you can uh, you can do the composting of leaves as well so what does one need for the composting for the home garden? There are different outs, uh, different uh, things are out there. If you go on Google or uh, try to search for uh, a home composter, you will probably come up with several, 40, 50, maybe more than hundreds of different variety just within India and uh, where people are selling different type of uh, composter. So basically you need a composting unit, you need some water, you need some air, uh, you need to mix it. So water you can add air you can do it by turning of the garbage uh, 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 sorry the curbing of the compost uh, vessel so that can be done and that's how the air can be injected or we can make the air injection through some other way as well so or uh, you can have a homemade wire uh, mesh board commercial drum plastic so you can even use something like this uh, to do this uh, compost uh, this stuff so there are different types of things that uh, could be used uh, what it does it provides good stabilized material for soil for the for the garden it uh, uses soil bulking but if the composting not done properly so that's the order problem it's uh, where you have uh, the smell uh, problem is there so good mixing prevent this uh, and then uh, some some uh, communities they provide central facility for large scale composting so you can uh, have a huge center facility you can bring your garbage and you can dump office or you can if it's not collected in your house and then that can be used in the compost plant 
mulching is uh, considered composting excellent for recycling mulching is when you cut the grass you leave the grass there itself and it mulches and then uh, it uh, adds uh, basically the it decomposes and adds itself it becomes part of the soil so that's uh, is also uh, used quite a bit so the thing is that uh, let's see so in terms of uh, we will look at some of this example of different types of uh, uh, problem. So, this problem we are trying to see the impact of compaction. So, if you do some compaction, uh, what is the impact of compaction of the garbage? So, it at source compaction it will impact collection rate. So, if you can compact the garbage a little bit, so all the air volumes are gone, most of it, waste gets compacted. Say even 1 kg may take this space so after compaction, if it is not compacted it may take this space. So, when from here to here when you go, you are saving some space and for the landfill industry, this landfill space is very, very costly. Say uh, like a million dollar per acre, so it is a, it's a, it's a big, uh, big number. So, if you can save some landfill space, that is actually a huge saving. So, at source compaction does imp uh, and then if it is a compacted that means less space on the trucks that means more houses can be shoved on truck so that means less number of trucks that means the save is, that means some save of uh, money there as well so you have to think uh, in that way like uh, again always for any subject matter always you think that where it will be applied and how potentially it can be applied so for example if here we are looking at some of these uh, compaction impacts uh, in terms of collection rates for example if you have a high rise container volume and uh, that typically collect the waste all collected in one bag commingle with no recycling you have 200 units of high rises building 3.5 people per unit uh, generation rate of 1.35 kg per person per day uncompacted specific weight is 100 kg per meter cube where the compaction it's around 250 kg per meter cube so if you want to compact it we get around 250 kg so determine uh, how much number of 7.5 meter cube containers you need before and after compaction we know the containers volume we know the amount of gas waste that is produced and we also know the specific weight. So, before compaction volume we can find out we know the total mass uh, how much kg is uh, there and then we can find out okay what is the if we if we have before compaction it comes out to be around 66.2 meter cube per week that means around 9 trips 9 trips per week. Now, if you use this compacted uh, uh, compactor uh, we are reducing, we are increasing the density, so reducing the volume, so volume goes down and then that means number of containers goes down as well and that means less number of trips. So, if you have the less number of trips, that means uh, you have, uh, you can save the number of trucks that you need to buy and as I was saying, these trucks are pretty expensive. So, if you have, if you can save the number of trucks that we need to buy, that means more money with municipality to do other things. So, those are uh, uh, things we need to uh, think about uh, in this kind of uh, problem. So, and uh, the other thing is that when you if you do the we, we always talk about the source separation is good. So, if you want to do a source separation, uh, separation of solid waste component at source, it is uh, like one way to reduce the mass volume uh, which is uh, sent to the landfill, but it also impacts the composition of the waste. So, if you look at uh, if you do the source separation it does affect the composition especially if you are trying to do a waste to energy plant. So, we will look at uh, the energy content, how the energy content changes when we do the source separation. So, these are these are very, very practical uh, application oriented problem where uh, you have your if you are doing the source separation that how it will impact your waste to energy plant. So, and uh, if you are putting too much of recycling uh, effort where you are trying to get all the plastics and papers out, how it will affect your recycling plant because uh, sorry, how it will affect your waste to energy plant because waste to energy plant requires good calorific value, good calorific value what are the materials plastic paper and some other materials are out there, but plastic paper is one of the uh, major component of that. So, if we can take all the plastic and paper away from the waste stream in the form of recycling, our calorific value goes down. So, that is what has been illustrated in this particular problem. And uh, the thing is that uh, we will we'll talk about it, it is uh, I am not saying that go and go for recycling, recycling is a, a good way of managing the waste, but you should realize that if you uh, because we all uh, different uh, technologies, different uh, plants are basically targeting the same material. 
the pool of material is the same. So if you are doing a very good job of recycling, that means your calorific value has to go down. You, it's a, uh, it's, there is no other way. So the, uh, if the remaining waste is composted, what is the energy content of the residual solid waste? We'll talk about that. Uh, we'll uh, do some math. So here I have used uh, the IC. I think this is for the first time you are seeing it. I have said a table 3.4. Now, what is this table 3.4? It is coming from this solid waste book. So it's uh, this book is uh, it's very old now. Unfortunately, the, this gen uh, this gentleman, Dr. Shabangolish, is also very old. I don't think he's going to revise this book any further. Uh, but uh, some other people may take up uh, this book and do it. Uh, this, but there are some of the basic stuff is there in this book, and I, I would encourage you, those of you who have some time, to at least uh, spend some time flipping through this book and try to read some of those materials. Uh, so, so that this particular table is coming from there, but you don't have to get uh, the book for this table because I have reproduced the table in the next slide. So, using this particular table from the solid waste book and converting uh, the percentage to 100 kg of waste, which is around 1.5 months of waste, calculate the total energy in the waste and then apply recycling and calculate the change in energy. So, if you do the recycling and what will be the change in energy. So, let us do this particular uh, math and I think uh, to, uh, in this uh, then probably will be towards the end of this video. So, we have the data and uh, let us see, let me we'll go to the next slide. So, here is the uh, table from uh, the book. Uh, where we have this solid waste uh, different uh, components food paper cardboard and all those things component has been provided to us uh, sorry uh, this is uh, this has been uh, provided to us then uh, for the inorganics also it has been given to us in terms of what is the uh, kg for each of these components we know the energy content uh, we have idea about the energy content so we know uh, how much energy uh, it's each of these uh, can produce and uh, so, from kilojoule for kilogram, we can go to megajoule. We know the we know the weight, so we can calculate the megajoule. So, this is the how much is the energy, and uh, for the other as well. So, total energy is 11.78.2 kilojoules for 100 kg of waste. So, that's the amount of energy which is there, and uh, so this is uh, the total without having any recyclable. We have 34% uh, paper, cardboard, plastics all those with high calorific value. If you can look at the here the uh, calorific value part, uh, let us see which one is the highest. Of course, we see the plastic uh, is the highest one. Then you have textile, no, the, and sorry in between we have uh, rubber uh, as well. And then we have uh, uh, take a, which one is this one, yeah leather and textile pretty much the same. Then we have uh, uh, cardboard paper. So, as you can see most of the stuff which could be recycled have a little bit of a higher uh, uh, energy content. So, based on that we can calculate this much amount of energy that is being produced from there. So, this is without doing the recycling. Now, let us look at if we do the recycling part how the energy changes. So, if we do, if we recycle 80 percent of the paper, 90 percent of the cardboard, 50 percent of the plastic. So, if you are recycling this, you have 80 percent of the paper is recycled, 90 percent of the cardboard is recycled and 50 percent of the plastic is recycled. So, if we can find out what is, what is the percentage removed, that is basically the data coming from here. And then based on the weight that we had earlier, we can find out how, what is the weight that is removed from the system. And based on their calorific value, which is again given in the previous uh, slide, we can find out what is the loss of energy. So, I would encourage you to do this like uh, these maths have been done for you, but to cross check these numbers. I can also make mistakes. So, cross check this number and if there is any mistake, let us know. Uh, so, it is uh, this is the how much uh, weight that is removed from the system. This is how much is the energy that is removed from the system. So, if you look at the weight loss. Uh, weight loss is out of 100 kg, 36.1 kg is removed. So, 36 percent is the weight loss, but effect, but in terms of the energy loss 657.4 initially it was 1178.2 in the previous slide. So, if you look at the energy loss is nearly 56 percent. So, with the weight loss is only 36 percent, but energy loss is 56 percent. Why? It uh, usually, uh, you, uh, typically you would expect this to be the same if 
the waste was uniform. If all the different components of the waste had the same calorific value, in that case probably yes. Here it is not that case. Here we have uh, the calorific value is different for different component as was shown in the previous uh, slide. So, that is why with only 36 percent of the reduce in the weight, we have 56 percent reduction in there. And uh, this waste to energy plant are uh, there and they have to be uh, uh, this uh, uh, what I am saying this if we start setting up a very good recycling system, we should uh, we should not get surprised that uh, once you have a very good recycling system, your calorific value at the waste to energy plant will go down because you can see from here because there will be reduction uh, the energy will lost because uh, um, it's it's energy loss from a incineration point of view. It's uh, but recycle again. I'm not saying recycling is bad. Recycling, but when you recycle certain components which is high calorific value, your calorific value at the waste to energy plant will also go down. So, in terms of when we do this integrated waste management framework, we have to look at all these different components and try to see which one will work best, which combination will work best uh, for that particular uh, smart city or for the particular city. So, with this let us uh, conclude this particular video and then we will go into the next video where we will continue some of these uh, math problem and then uh, as uh, we wanted to do a little bit of discussion on landfill. There are three major things we will talk about uh, in terms of uh, treatment and disposal site. Uh, we will talk about the composting anaerobic digestion that is on the biological side. We will talk about the thermal treatment which is on uh, uh, thermal incineration and all and then of course, we will talk about the disposal in a landfill before we move to other uh, like uh, construction and demolition waste and e-waste which will be on the last 4 weeks. So, let us stop here and I will again see you in the next uh, video. Thank you.